Grace Snyder is known for her beautiful quilts, which reflect her life in the Sandhills of Nebraska. Her story begins in May 1885. That's when three-year-old Grace McCants, her mother and two sisters stepped off a train and onto the muddy streets of Cozad, Nebraska. They joined Grace's father, who had staked a claim on 160 acres of Custer County farmland through the Homestead Act. The McCants family grew to nine children. They lived in a sod house like the one pictured here. By the age of six, Grace was proudly tending her father's cattle and learning to carefully piece four-patch quilt blocks. Grace married Albert Snyder in 1903, and they settled into a sod house along the Squaw Creek in the Nebraska Sandhills. Grace traded her eggs and butter for supplies at the general store in Tryon, the only town in McPherson County. Tryon had a sod courthouse, a general store and three houses, but within a few years, the town more than doubled in size. <coughs> Bert purchased a used Model T Ford and later traded up to a newer model, but he never learned how to use the new gear shift. So Grace became the family chauffeur. She kept a box of quilting pieces with her when she drove Bert around the ranch. While he mended fences, she pieced her quilts. Because of bad roads, bad weather, and long distances between homesteads, the Snyders were often isolated on their ranch. Grace devoted these times to cutting fabric, stitching her pieces, and honing her quilt-making skills. But the Snyders would soon have neighbors. The Kincaid Bill of 1903 offered 640 acres of land to homesteaders who settled in the Sandhills. Kincaiders flooded the region. Fences stretched across McPherson County, separating farms and ranches. But a new threat loomed on the horizon. Plowing and overgrazing made the land vulnerable to strong winds. Drought struck the region. The drifting blowouts of the early 1900s continue to plague the Sandhills today. Many farmers gave up. They sold their land or simply walked away. Grace and her neighbors formed the Helping Hand Club. They reached out to families struggling with poverty, sickness, or just bad luck. They also made quilts for families in need and to sell at fundraisers. Grace Snyder's quilts reflect her life in the Nebraska Sandhills. She made many quilts for her family and friends. This private legacy offers a unique view into the life of a remarkable woman and extraordinary quilter. Good neighbors were important to survival in the Sandhills. Grace honored that strong community bond in this quilt containing the brands and names of 36 local ranchers. Grace always added something unique to her quilts. Using a pattern she got from the Omaha World Herald, she changed a cattle roping cowboy into her husband Bert adding his nickname, Pinnacle Jake. Grace made this quilt with 16 appliqued and embroidered little girls to keep her young granddaughter company at night. The granddaughter slept alone in her room and was frightened by coyotes howling in the sandhills. Along with the quilt, Grace wrote a poem explaining the friendship offered by the 16 little companions. Sadly, the poem was lost, but the sentiment remains. Grandpa Bert and his grandson love to fish. That lucky boy is shown in this quilt with two fish on his line.
Grace made this quilt for a grandson, but she liked it so well she kept it to display in several exhibitions. In 1949, it won Best of Show at the Nebraska State Fair. Grace gave the quilt to her grandson after he got married. The Broken Star is a variation of the popular Lone Star pattern, one of Grace's favorite designs. Made in the 1930s, the quilt's pastel colors reflect the popular trend of the time. Attention to detail marked Grace's approach to quilt making, and she was known for her hand piecing and hand quilting. In this quilting pattern, Grace added the year 1950 and her initials GS. This design was probably taken from a contemporary china pattern. Mrs. McGill's cherries features 504 red circles. According to her daughter, Grace applicated each cherry on the quilt using only her visual instincts. No markings were used to guide her hand. She quilted 1938 into the background. The Lincoln quilt was designed by Ann Orr and published as a pattern by the Lockport Cotton Batting Company. Each block contains 128 small yellow squares surrounded by four eight-pointed stars. Family members recall Grace sketching the leaf design from grapevine leaves found in the hills of Lincoln County. Grace created her own naturalistic design pattern to resemble the basket weave of containers used for grapes at the time. In 1999, Quilters Newsletter Magazine asked 29 quilt experts to select the 100 best American quilts of the 20th century. More than half chose Grace's Flower Basket Petty Point. Made in 1943, this masterpiece took 16 months to finish and used more than 87,000 tiny triangles to reproduce a china design by the Salem China Company of Salem, Ohio. Grace's hexagon mosaic was also included in the 100 best American quilts of the 20th century. Using a black and white photo as a guide, Grace designed her own version of an Albert Small quilt. Grace's quilt is made up of 58,640 pieces. As Grace's eyesight began to fail, her trademark tiny stitches became more difficult to achieve. Never willing to lower her standards, Grace created her final quilt in 1953. For years, Grace had searched for a black and yellow fabric that reminded her of a favorite dress she wore while herding cattle on her father's homestead and learning the art of quilting. This familiar fabric became the princess feather, a touching reminder of her early quilting days and a fitting end to a long career of extraordinary stitches. In 1980, at age 98, Grace Snyder was inducted into the Quilters Hall of Fame. Her artistry and skill live on in the many quilts she created throughout her lifetime. Today, Grace Snyder is an icon of American quilt making.